When I was in Korea, we, there was a let up in the war. And so dirty, and it was, it was a nice spring day, and I, I knew there was a river new, nearby. So I got to my buddies, and I was going down to the river and go swimming. I just jumped in with my, my clothes and everything on, you know, and swam out. As a society, we talk a good game and we pat ourselves on the back and say, support the troops. How? <laughs> Originally, uh, based on a 2010 study, it was 18 veterans per day are committing suicide. That average is now up to 22. So I jumped in there and I swam out in it. And uh, thinking, like, how beautiful it is. Uh, I can see myself in the water. Then all of a sudden I saw through my own image into the bottom of the river and it was full of decaying and rotting hundreds of bodies. They go to war, they experience some of the most transformative experiences that basically undoes their own moral fiber, what they see themselves as. I didn't want to talk about the war for a long time. And uh, you know, I, went, I painted uh, landscapes and figure painting. One professor found out I was in Vietnam. He called me a Nazi. There is this notion that we have in our culture, in our society, that like soldiers are tough. How would they go? Cold War veteran. They don't feel that they can share those experiences with us. This is the opening to our Memorial Day show, Tenacity and Truth. And what it is is a curated uh, exhibit from our permanent collection. We have art in this show from World War II, the Korean War, the Cold War, Vietnam, and Iraq. And that's what this is. The photography, the paintings, my painting, all this work. It's our marks. So this is a story. It's a story about a hot day, traveling in a convoy to a village called Swan Lok. We had to travel through the rubber plantations. Tall rubber trees is almost bars in a prison because that's kind of how we thought we were. We couldn't call home, you know, we couldn't socialize with the locals and meet the girls in the village. It was like a prison. Black Vets is just my statement in reference to my African American heritage, having gone to fight in a war, having returned to a small southern town in Georgia, and was being very ignored by the population, not just as a vet, but as a black American, and feeling kind of ostracized and a little angry about the way that we were looked at and then began to look at the whole factor of Vietnam veterans and the way the Americans were treating them. And then I, when I was in Korea, I went into Japan uh, as a, on, on rest and recuperation. And I had the opportunity to go into a home. I was the guest, so they handed me first green tea in this beautiful cup. And I drank it, you know, and then I started looking at it, and it was, it was so unbelievably beautiful. It had been raccooned in the surface of that cup bowl. It was like looking into a sunset, looking like, looking like into the Grand Canyon, you know, it was like, looking at what nature does and whether it's right or wrong I don't know but that is what I've always tried to do in my art. The reason I'm telling you this story is that it was the basis for what I became uh, as an artist. The piece that's in this exhibition is called Bad Dog and uh... What happened was a couple of uh, a couple of days after the battle and after the after the bodies had been you know gathered up and, and buried, 
Uh, he had a bunch of little dogs that used to hang around the compound, they were scrounging for scraps and things. And uh, so one of the dogs showed up and he was he had a, a human hand in his uh, you know, in his mouth that he was carrying around. I didn't want this experience to be forgotten. That attitude, love of the action of doing it, the love of the material. And uh, so that's that's me in, in the in the guard bunker. It was just a, it was just a very uh, sort of liberating experience to to do my you know, visual memoirs of the war. I am I a contemporary artist, and uh, I do believe that I have tossed a lot of the rocks that were in my backpack out. How many people? How many veterans are coming back and are holding on to this pain? How many people are holding on to this anguish? And uh, and that's where their mind to keep came about. It, like each arm representing a veteran and a memory uh, of the pain that they're holding on to. The gesture itself, it is both like the fences sort of in the action movies where the hero takes like somebody and sh uh, like brings them to protect them or like you're holding on to something in a very possessive manner as if it's yours and yours alone. I mean this piece is not specifically about any particular war, but just about, you know, somebody getting part of their head blown off. It's a memory that I will forever have. It's a testament that I hope that I will never experience again. This is called uh, Mouse Killer War. Uh, I like to wrap soldiers in Teflon tape. You remember Teflon Bill that makes him bulletproof. <laughs> but, and like this piece is called Trophy Hunter. And, um, you know, it's just pieces that I found and started realizing that, yeah, you know, we all needed a trophy, you know, for our war effort, and so I made a trophy. And this, this trophy in here was really neat when I put it in there, glued it in there, and put it on there, and I left. I came back to the studio, and it had slumped because of the plastic. The glue melted the plastic. I didn't like war then. I don't like war now. Here I am with you guys. Uh, happy that this Veterans Museum evolved from the Vietnam Veterans Museum to the Veterans Museum. So the show that you're seeing today is definitely a step in the right direction. When I, I got to Korea, about two weeks later, the, the company commander came down and said, um, I see you are a, a military, I mean, you are a, a newspaper photographer and our, our photographer just rotated home a couple days ago and would you like that job? I said, yeah, you know, if I can give you up my M1 rifle, and he said, yeah, 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 you know. So uh, he forgot to tell me that the photographer that uh, I was replacing had shipped home two days earlier in a, uh, a bag. I put that out of my mind for a long time. I tried to put the whole war experience out of my mind. Someone else earlier, I think you said you did the same thing. But it eventually comes back. You know, it gets in there. And the way it came back on me was I found myself doing skulls and skeletons and things. Every time I paint, it become a skull. This problem isn't going away. Um, and to me, like this, as a representation of that. It's a physical manifestation of that issue. It's something that you, we can't ignore. We can't let it go unnoticed. We do have to talk about it. We do have to engage with it. Um, so if you have any questions, um, I'll be around. <laughs> Thank you for your time.